Hi everybody and welcome to another piano video here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. We are reviewing Schimmel's Mighty K219. This is a seven foot plus monster. What a bass on this instrument and the cabinet resonance is to die for. Some really unique and special musical qualities that this instrument just has in spades. I've loved getting to know this instrument. So we're gonna be walking through all of those different things. I'm gonna be sharing with you the aspects of its design that I think contribute to that sound and doing a bit of playing as well. If it's the first time that you've found us here on the channel, we would really love for you to subscribe, hit the notification bell, because that way you'll know when we come out with new videos and we're always doing that. Uh, and we'd love to have you as a regular commenter and viewer. It makes us feel great to know that these videos are getting enjoyed and a few people find them useful. That's the whole reason we do it. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive right in with the Schimmel K219 right away. So every time you're behind a great piano, it pulls your ear in a slightly different direction and it inspires you to play in certain ways. It changes uh, how you, uh, you know, express yourself as a musician. And that's always a sign of a, a great instrument is that it's a partner. Uh, there is some give and take. Uh, you sit down with one idea, it might have a different idea and within a matter of seconds, suddenly you've found the balance and you're playing and you're creating and you're expressing in a slightly different way that's totally unique to the combination of you and that instrument. And so uh, this K219 Schimmel um, had that effect right away and I just love that about pianos because you sit down, uh, you start playing and 20 minutes later you suddenly realize that you're exploring textures and uh, harmonies and um, moods that maybe you've never even thought of before. They, they just come out of nowhere and it's it's because you're in front of a piano that's just playing new tricks on your ears in all of the best ways. And this K219 is, is doing that in spades. And with this piano, and I'm not surprised because it's a Schimmel and Schimmels uh, kind of are, are known for this generally speaking, um, but in particular this piano has produced such texture, such a uh, gorgeous blended texture that I've just been in front of this instrument doing nothing but doing, you know. Uh... Like I'm commanding a Hollywood string section or something. It's so orchestral. It's so orchestral.
It's so blended, it's so orchestral. It's just the texture that gets you. It's quite special. It's a cool piano. Uh, these are instruments that I am more recently coming to know. Um, I find it fascinating when you get into the high-end German uh, piano uh, industry, how different the instruments are. Because we like to kind of paint um, instruments by the country that they're from. And there really is a huge variety of tones and textures that come out of Germany. And people say, oh, I like the German sound. There's no such thing. Or if you have a German sound in your head, uh, you just haven't listened to very many of them. Because if you truly get under the hood and explore uh, the full range of what it means to play a German piano, it's as varied as anything that you will find right across the world. The main difference is when you're usually playing a German piano, the imperfections are uh, either non-existent or so small that what you're left with is really just hearing the differences in design. So if there is a German characteristic, that would be it, uh, is that the lack of imperfections are so minute uh, that you really are left just with the exposed uh, differences in tonal philosophy. Uh, this plays totally differently to a Beckstein. It plays totally different to a Seiler. plays completely different to a Hamburg Steinway. plays totally different to a Steingruber. Uh, they're all different. Um, and with this one, it's funny, I find myself seldom playing any kind of jazz harmonies um, because those, those harmonies don't quite have the, the height of the resonances that these larger open uh, major and minor chords with less dissonances than you just want to hear all of these kind of harm harmonics shoot through the air. Uh, that's the fun of this instrument. So the concert series of the, which this is a member uh, is different from the Schimmel Classic series in a number of ways. Uh, the rims are a little bit thicker. Um, the angle uh, in which the two sides kind of jut out to create even a larger soundboard space is a little more extreme uh, in the concert series. Um, but it largely comes down to finishing time, quality of the soundboard. Um, there's a little bit more sophistication in the bridge design on the concert series. Uh, and one of the more obvious things is that they put a concert-sized action into every concert uh, model. So no matter whether it's a K195 or a K219 or whatever it is, uh, that you've got a full concert key length in there. Uh, and so the sense of control and some depth you have in the action is really pretty cool. Uh, combine that with the fact that you've got soundboard area which is approaching uh, the same as some concert grand pianos and this instrument gives you bass tone like a nine foot. Schimmel gets rim activation uh, almost better than anybody else in the industry. And they make a big deal of it. They talk about how their beam structure is really kind of this radial approach, which is not unique. Um, but the, um, I, I guess the engineering time that they put into this uh, is, gives you some fairly obvious results. Uh, like when you start to play in the mid-range on this instrument.
The whole cabinet of this instrument is resonating like bananas. So you have more cabinet resonance as a part of the sound than you normally get uh, on an instrument. This instrument is equipped with a triplex scale, meaning there is a tuned uh, length of string on this side of the pressure bar, um, and then there is a tuned length of string on the other side of the duplex. So they call that a triplex scale because there's really three separate tuned lengths of string that are all free to resonate in the treble uh, section of this instrument. So they're really trying for kind of maximum harmonic color uh, in the top of this instrument. And by tuning it, uh, they really are uh, compelling your ear towards more, um, just more and more uh, series of those upper partials. And I think that's why some of those really resonant chords, major chords in particular, uh, it just activates more of the piano, and that's why your ear is kind of drawn in that direction. Yeah, and probably the last factor that really influences your sense of, of width, because we have already mentioned uh, the, the extra width on the soundboard that these shimmels have. Um, we know that we're getting more cabinet resonance, we're getting more harmonics off, off the trop. They also have this unique, uh, rather than using vertically laminated bridges, they use horizontally laminated bridges, which may also contribute uh, to how much uh, activation you get along the bridge from any individual string. Um, these things are always as much art as, or versus science, uh, but that's that's my impression. That's that's uh, you know understanding the design of this instrument. Instrument. That's where I think a lot of this is coming from. So when you Tally all of that up as a, as, as a complete picture um, versus standard soundboard tone and just the fundamental tone, there is um, a much greater degree of extra sound happening on top of that with the shimmel. And that's this kind of blending that you get, this impression of a really truly blended sound and the shimmer uh, that you get around this instrument. So. Let's start in the bass and just uh, kind of quickly give a, a quick description of the, the full range. Uh, the bass in this instrument is actually a little less brassy than what you get on some of the smaller shimmels. But there's this beautiful uh, resonating note that you get out of the lower fifth of this instrument. So they actually switch from the copper to uh, the bi or the trichords right when they switch from the bass bridge onto the treble bridge, which is always a more challenging uh, break to tackle as a piano designer. Now they do a really great job of avo avoiding any of those unwanted extra uh, harmonics or uncontrolled harmonics, but you definitely can hear a bit of a shift to the brass. I say brass, but I mean the copper, because I'm thinking brass. get up into the treble. Quite a warm sound through this mid-range.
a really thick treble up here. but still, you know, maintaining Yeah, there's more information there than when you get on the classic, that's for sure. But the biggest thing is there just sounds like there's more punch. It feels like there's more punch through that treble. Lots of power. Particularly through the taco octave, they've done a nice job of getting sustain and some really uh, uh, thick character through there. Yeah. Now the action on this, already made mention of the concert level or the concert length keys so that's certainly contributing to uh, you know the sense that you're in a, behind a quite a big instrument there's lots of control they use a very unique texture on the white key I don't know if they have a name for it but it, it they describe it as kind of a mineral content or minerally a kind of a texture it does have this uh, yeah it, it feels the, the glide is different than anything that you get on the other top end instruments. So I don't know whether they develop that uh, in house or whether they're, uh, that's kind of a proprietary um, surface material that they have applied to it, but nice job on there. Uh, these are ebony keys on the black keys. So the texture on the black keys is, is great. The glide on the black keys is really nice. Uh, and these come regulated perfectly. I mean, it's a classic Renner action. Yeah, I mean, I think for the concert series Schimmel, where these really shine is when it comes to value, because these will stand up against uh, any of the other high-end German pianos uh, in terms of build quality, in terms of fit and finish, and certain aspects of the musicality are absolutely there. And so when you consider an instrument like this is going to be as much as 50% less uh, than, say, the equivalent Siebeckstein, if the style of playing draws on the characteristics as this instrument has in spades, you're in luck. If you want all the power and you want all of that color in the same kind of sustain, but more separation and more clarity, uh, you know, a little uh, better ability to get a melody singing over some of that texture, well, there's only two or three pianos in the world that's going to do that any better than this one does. Um, and you're going to pay for that. So it sits in this interesting price point. It's, it's almost directly competing against, say, New York Steinway, for, you know, size for size, price for price with the concert uh, series. And I think it presents an incredibly compelling option. So that is the K219, uh, an instrument that plays much bigger than it actually is. You close your eyes and you definitely swear that you were behind a nine foot. Um, utilizing that wider uh, soundboard design that Schimmel uh, talks a lot about in their own literature. Uh, we've got triplex scaling and a fantastic amount of cabinet resonance really giving a much larger uh, proportion of, say, secondary tone. 
well, it's called secondary tone, uh, on top of the fundamental, and it creates this uh, beautiful wash, this beautiful shimmer, uh, and this sense of really, truly blended tone uh, on this instrument. Very capable, um, perfect right out of the box, um, and a real treat to play. Anyway, thank you so much for watching uh, this exploration. It's the first time I've ever been uh, really behind a 219 uh, for any great length of time, and it's been a ton of fun. Uh, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell if you've enjoyed this little chat or this look at the piano and you'd like to see more because we're always coming out with more and it'd be great to have you on the channel as a regular viewer. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Marion Pianos on YouTube and we will see you again soon.